what's happening in this Niners Steelers game coming up on Sunday in Pittsburgh where, you know, I think the thought was when Nick Bosa, whenever that gets done, Pete Prisco told us on Tuesday's edition of the show, Bosa's contract is going to get done. He's going to play. Like when that happens, do we think this is going to go to three? San Francisco is going to go from two and a half to three. Where like the line sat at three most of the offseason. Yep. San Francisco minus three on the road at Pittsburgh a couple weeks ago with Pittsburgh looking awesome in the preseason. Maybe some skittishness from betters around Brock Purdy surgically repaired like shoulder. Like uh, it gets bet off three down to two and a half. Ken, where are we right now with San Francisco at Pittsburgh? Yeah, it's funny. It was on the plane yesterday and uh, sports came on and i was like and there was a ton of nfl news like so bosa was in there a couple other uh, kelsey was in there obviously chris jones and so the bosa and i'm, I'm thinking to myself because i don't i didn't have any like internet i just go oh man like bosa signed like i wonder i wonder what's going to happen to that market the cooper cup news came out which we'll talk about at some point oh what's going to happen to that market i didn't have any answers and then like landed open up the phone check out like you know what the current betting markets are or whatever uh even more interest in pittsburgh so uh, three to two and a half is the move that Nick was talking about where the threes got bet, you know, basically a couple weeks ago, last week, something like that. And the two and a halfs have now become twos in a bunch of places. So the perceived difference between these teams shrinking Pittsburgh has just been like the sexy team. I feel like all off season where it's like, Oh no, like Kenny Pickett, huge upside, Mike Tomlin, like always finishes above 500 and just like, no, this team has a chance to like be really, really special this year. I, we've heard, basically everybody on that side and nobody on the side of now Pittsburgh's going to stink. Actually, they're going to go under eight and a half wins. So just really interesting to see that take shape in this market. Uh, despite Bosa signing his huge contract. They're, uh, they're bringing sexy back. Yeah. Can he pick it? He knows how to act. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I want to keep doing yeah. this. I think I might want to bail <laughs> at, the, at the eject button. Um, Mike Tomlin. <laughs> Everyone bets him coach of the year. <laughs> you might have heard never goes under yeah. 500. Uh, Nick Bosa gets signed yesterday on Wednesday by San Francisco. And not only does the line not go up towards the Niners, maybe the expectation amongst betters with, with influence was that Bosa was always going to get signed and play in the game. But we've actually seen uh, the opposite here with Pittsburgh going to plus two. So San Francisco now a two point road favorite, total 41 and a half. What do you have for us here, if anything, here on the Niners and the Steelers? Yeah, you guys asked me a couple weeks ago what would be like my looks for week one. And I think I mentioned the Steelers as one that I would probably be on. And uh, it is one. This is kind of like a, a double-ended play, though. I have edges on the Steelers and the over in this game. Um, ultimately, it's week one. There's a lot of uncertainty. We don't really know for sure how things are going to play out. But I did see a lot of things from the Steelers in preseason, from Matt Canada especially, stretching the field, stuff that we have not seen previously and I would really like the Steelers to stretch the field because I think that they have the receivers that are capable of doing it and I've been a Kenny Pickett stand for a long time as well I don't know that Nick Bosa signing has an impact on game one because I would just imagine he's going to be on a pretty severe snap count we don't know that for sure this is pure speculation there's not really a precedent for guys holding out this well there is but it's it's a very small sample sample size um, so I don't know that it necessarily has an impact in this game specifically. With that said, I do like the 49ers matchup on offense as well. Um, they're very good at yards after the catch, have been for several years. You look at the Steelers defense last year, below average in terms of yards after the catch, and that's been like a, a consistent theme for them now going on several years with them getting worse and worse in that type of situation. And honestly, like Brock Purdy, there's a lot of uncertainty, but the guy put up 32 points per game as a starter last year in the six games he played at the end of the regular season. So I do think that we're going to see points. People typically think of these teams as defensive teams. I think like we're kind of gravitating towards them being offensive teams, and uh, this is a really low total for what I think these offenses are capable of. So over here, I make the game closer to pick them as well. You can decide whatever you want to do there. Maybe Steelers team total over would be the play for a lot of people. Is there a bet that you placed that you're like the most confident in, right? A famous last words right before season starts. And is there a bet you placed that you're just like, now I don't know. Like maybe I'm not in good on this. Maybe I, maybe I am. Uh, it might be the same. Might be the same bet. Yeah. I I love all my Packers bets, yeah. and now like and now. I know it's only one game and like yeah. Romeo Dobbs returned to practice today. Christian Watson didn't practice yesterday yep. or today. And like he was hurt a lot of last year. And it's just, it's making me realize like, like the Packers are kind of like, like, like Jenga, right? Yeah. And you pull like, you pull Christian Watson out and like this whole thing could come falling apart. Yeah. And it's only one game and he might, he might, he could practice tomorrow. He could play on right. Sunday. Just that like, I feel really good about these bets. If 
like the key principles are able to stay healthy. But if they don't, I feel like that bet could be a total disaster. So like I both love that bet. And now I'm also like, eh, I'm not so sure about this. I, yeah, I totally agree. The Packers would have been my vote for, oh man, now I, I don't know. Like, are we, are we all really in the same boat here that we're all just really like not looking good on these Packers futures. And then at the same time, I, it's just, all right, what are you, what are you most confident in? I think it's like impossible. Washington doesn't go over their win total. Number. <laughs> I, know you I love think this. it's like actually impossible. Um, I think they're going to win at least seven. I, re I really, I just, I feel very confident about that. And the Saints under, I just make Derek Carr and Dennis Allen have to win 10 games, make, make them have to win 10 games. And I think they're like literally incapable of doing that. So yeah, those two for what, so Packers, so that you said that was your answer to both was yeah, Packers? Yeah, because like, I, so I love... So it's your most confident and least so, confident? So I'm extremely <laughs> confident in it if everyone's able to stay healthy. Okay. But if they don't, I feel like it's DOA. Is there another, like, most confident? Well, I don't know about, like, most... Because, like, I, I love my Dolphins Super Bowl okay. that I made. Because I feel like that's in the Miami's range of outcomes. Sure. It's not necessarily to, like, win the AFC East all yep. the time. But get into the tournament. And then, like, with, with when Jalen Ramsey's back and, like, Armstead will be healthy, you would think at that point. And I think, like, the ceiling for the Dolphins is to win a championship. Like, I absolutely love that bet. I love my bet on the Saints under. I'll echo you on that big yeah. time. Love the New Orleans Saints under. Uh, I, I tailed you on the Bears under. I think I really like that one I a do lot. That might be one where I'm like, I like the Vikings under. Yeah, how do you not like the Vikings? I under? like the Vikings under a Apparently lot. Apparently, they're becoming much less likely to win on Sunday too. Everybody's betting Tampa in that game. We'll do that in that move probably down to five and a half in most places. Yeah, v Vikings under. Tech, what's the, what's the most confidence? Like a tie between all four of them. Can I give? I want to give you one other, and this will spoil something we'll do a little later in the show. Oh boy, when we do our awards. Yeah. Oh, you got you got a a winner in the awards. That's uh, surprising. No. It's you talked about this player, and I was thinking about it a lot last night and a lot today. In which which award market? Comeback. Oh, how, how's how is Odell Beckham not winning this award? I mean, there are ways I'd like he doesn't. To believe you. Yeah, like, I, I just think that's like, I think that's such a good bet. I, it, maybe I do it doesn't too. win, but I love that bet. It's uh, it's crazy. I feel like we've talked about that award market a lot on the show, and obviously, if you're if you're betting that award market, you're trying to figure out how to can Demar Hamlin be beaten in that award market is someone else going to win comeback player of the year instead of DeMar Hamlin for a variety of reasons. And uh, even reading the preseason content, like ESPN puts out their poll or their, uh, their awards picks, NFL puts out their awards picks, whatever. Some of them are like, Oh, it's DeMar Hamlin. No matter what he plays, he wins. And then ESPN put out one and they all picked comeback player of the year. And the words DeMar Hamlin were not mentioned in the entire piece. And they all picked Odell Beckham, by the way. There are rumblings behind the scenes that this is like something potentially bad for Cooper Cup, maybe even playing this entire season. I'm not saying he's out for the year. He could come back in week two. Just that like there, there is some speculation that that could be the case. At the very least, Ken, he won't be playing on Sunday for the LA Rams. This is the one market in week one that uh, I just, I really don't understand what's happening. Every other game we talk about like, oh, the line moved to this, the line moved to this. Okay, I can attach that to a piece of injury news. Uh, I guess Houston 10 to nine and a half is a little interesting and something that I couldn't have seen coming. Um, but like most of the other line moves, it's like you just attach them to injury news. It's like pretty easy to, to see why everything's moving the way it's moving. And and yet we have this game, which has been like five, five and a half, six, the entire offseason. And now we know Cooper Cup's not playing. And the market for this game is basically unchanged. The Seahawks are five and a half point favorites everywhere. Uh, that has not moved at all, even despite the fact that Cooper Cup was declared out. Still five and a half, which I think is just insane. But I mean, I obviously, I, I guess I'm wrong because like nobody seems to agree with me. Um, I have like a ton of Seattle money line from when he was first declared or uh, when he was going to go see the specialist rather in Minnesota. It's like, well, that doesn't sound good. He's probably not playing in the game. I'll just bet all this Seattle money line, except it hasn't aged really well. And I bet a bunch of Seattle five and that hasn't aged really well. I got a half point of CLV so far. I, if Cooper Cup's, well, we know he's not going to play. With him not playing, Stafford didn't play the entire preseason. He's going to play on the road at Seattle with, like, no receivers. And this is going to go great. Like, this is going to be a really competitive game. It just seems so unlikely to me. Um, as you said earlier, can't wait to see how we're wrong. Because apparently nobody else that's betting into the market feels the way we do. I really like Seattle in this game. So, and, and like, this is not to say that, like, Seattle is a lock. They're definitely going to win. They're definitely going to cover. But think about it like this, right? And this is, I know Ken knows this for our listeners right. and viewers. This entire offseason, this line has kind of been hovering like six or five and a half, right? Like one of the two numbers. And that was operating under the assumption that Cooper Cup was going to play in the game. And Cup is obviously the most important offensive player on the Rams, not named Matthew Stafford. Yeah. And now we're one sitting. offensive player of the year. Yeah. And, and now we're sitting a couple days out from the game. Cooper Cup is not playing. And the number's just the same. 
Like what? Yeah. Yeah. What? I, I, I don't know. I wish I had. I wish I could tell you why it's moving the way it's moving or why, it's, what why, would, why uh, nothing is moving. What would Stone Cold Steve Austin say about, about the uh, lack of line movement here? I don't, I don't know. What? what? Is Stone, is that what was Cooper that his Cup thing? out? What? Was that his thing? It was one of them. Do you have the board up right now? Yeah. Hashtag board. What do you have with the Rams and Seahawks right now? Oh, my God. A lot of line movement toward the Rams. The, Ra- the Rams are getting slammed right now. There's a four. What's happening? We're going to be way wrong on this. No, we're not. No, we're going to be right. But, like, why? Why do people like the Rams? If you're listening and you like the Rams, can you send me a note telling me why you like the Rams? I'm honestly just curious. I don't, I like, if it's, okay, secondary injuries for Seattle, great. Also, who do they have to cover? I'm very confused by um, this. Yeah. There's a four. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I would like to bet. What is going on? I don't know. I, I, I guess we're wrong. Like, I guess we're wrong. I don't know. Usually this, they're not as uh, perplexing as that one is. So. Well, apparently maybe we should just like Seattle. I don't, I don't understand. Can you like message someone and be like, what's happening? Why, what, what do you want me to do? You know, like I just. Well, we uh, are going to break in a minute. Yeah, it's true. I can send a couple notes. Yeah. Like I just, like, I need to know what's happening here. Like I, I'm ready to accept that I'm wrong. I would just like to know how I'm wrong. I, I like, can't wait to watch this game now and see how I'm wrong. And now I'm like, well, now is my Rams under six. Uh, board's board's mostly five still, though. Okay. So, like, there was some movement toward the Rams, but not everywhere. I, we were still, like, stable. But the point is, like, we're directionally, we're way, like, we're, we're going in the Rams direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't seem like something you would want. Um, This is why betting's great. Seahawks-Rams has become the most interesting game in week one. Yeah. Like, by a lot, almost, from, yeah. a, from, a, from a betting perspective. Okay. 